Learning to cut out compulsions was one of the most useful skills that I picked up on the journey of recovery from mental illness. But learning to cut out compulsions is extremely difficult. So something that helped me with cutting out compulsions was starting to see them all as a single compulsion. And that compulsion is hitting myself in the face with a hammer. What's really important about that is that that one compulsion is always painful. Choosing to hit myself in the face with a hammer is inevitably going to cause me pain and all sorts of problems. In this video, I'm gonna explain three reasons why I found this perspective to be particularly useful. The first reason I think it's useful to see all compulsions as hitting ourselves in the face with a hammer is that it helps us connect the compulsion with the consequences of the compulsion. Because what often happens when we're struggling with our mental health is that we like the compulsion. We think it's useful. We think we're good at it. And we dislike the consequences. So it's like saying, I like swinging the hammer at my face, but why do I feel all this pain? Why is my jaw hurt? Why do I always get headaches? Oh, I wish those would stop. But the reality is that you can't separate those two. Choosing to swing the hammer at your face is choosing to experience the consequences of that action. This was something that I struggled with so much. I, mean, I was engaging in compulsions constantly. They took over my life but I didn't think there was anything wrong with them. But I was still very upset that I was getting more and more depressed and more and more anxious. It really helped to begin to connect the things I was doing with the outcomes I was experiencing because those outcomes, those consequences were completely natural. If you swing a hammer at your face, it's totally natural to experience lots of pain. Anxiety, depression, these are types of pain. If you're engaging in compulsions, it's totally natural to experience those types of pain. I'll give you an example. In the past, if I was out on the street walking around, I might go across the crosswalk and maybe a car would speed through past the pedestrians. And immediately I would start to judge them. They shouldn't do that. I could have gotten hit. They could have run over somebody. I would see myself getting hit by the car. I would feel it. I would do things like that all of the time, wherever I was. I was constantly judging people, judging what they were doing, judging whether it was right or wrong or good or bad. And then I would spend the rest of the day reacting to that compulsion by thinking about it, ruminating on it, engaging in all sorts of other compulsions, making myself feel worse. But I thought I was good at judging. I, I was good at judging. I was good at swinging the hammer. I liked it. I was very fast at it. I could do it better than anybody else. People liked me because I was good at judging. Judging is a compulsion and it has very natural consequences. So I would spend all day judging people and getting angry and thinking about all the reasons they were wrong and what they should do and how they should be different. And at the end of the day, of course, I would be miserable and more anxious. I would feel like I had gotten run over by so many cars. I would feel like I had gotten wrong by so many people. So of course I was anxious. Of course I was more anxious around cars and when I was walking around. I spent all day telling my brain that I got run over by a car. After swinging the hammer at my face all day, it's totally normal to be in a lot of pain. The solution to that isn't to try to relieve the pain or you know, take painkillers or do things to try to distract myself from that pain. I mean, the solution to that is to not engage in that compulsion. I had to recognize that even though I, I liked judging and I was good at judging, I couldn't say that I disliked the results of that but I liked doing it. It's the same as saying, I like swinging a hammer at my face and I'm good at it, but oh, I really dislike all of this pain that I'm experiencing in my face. You can't separate those two. The second reason why it's helpful to see all compulsions as being the same as hitting yourself in the face with a hammer is because it helps us see what's more valuable. When we're struggling with our mental health, we often value short-term relief from feelings we don't like at the expense of our long-term health and well-being. And those long-term costs are much greater than the relief we get in the short term. But we can always think of reasons to engage in compulsions right now. Why we need to do these things. Why it's going to help us get down to work. Why it's going to help us relax. Why we deserve it. This time will be different. You're going to be able to handle it this time. You're not going to go overboard. You just need to to do this compulsion or it feels like the urges are never gonna go away. Of course you do engage in the compulsion and it just leads to more anxiety and more depression and more struggling with all the feelings that you don't like. Because in the short term 
Most compulsions, they don't seem that bad. Like most of them are what lots of people consider normal behaviors. It doesn't seem like there's gonna be a problem to send your boss that one email just to check and see how they respond about that report you sent them because you wanna judge whether or not they're upset about all the things you said in it, whether or not they're going to fire you. That seems normal. People don't want to get fired. But then your boss responds with a very, very short email that says they're busy right now and they'd like to meet you in the morning to talk about something. And now you're going to stay up all night ruminating on what you think they're going to say to you in the morning when they fire you. So you spend the whole night searching for other jobs because surely you're about to get fired in the morning. You have screwed up big. You're going to end up broke out on the street dead in a ditch in your underwear with a drunk monkey. But if you'd recognize that you were dealing with some uncertainty about what your boss thinks and you practiced accepting that uncertainty because the alternative to accepting that uncertainty was to engage in a compulsion, which is hitting yourself in the face with a hammer, then you probably wouldn't have done it. Because asking yourself, hey, should I send my boss an email to check if they like the report is very different from asking yourself, Hey, I'm really uncertain about what my boss thinks. Do I want to hit myself in the face with a hammer right now? No, you don't want to hit yourself in the face with a hammer. It's going to hurt. The third reason why I think it's helpful to see all compulsions is hitting yourself in the face with a hammer is that it helps you see past the superficial qualities of what you're struggling with and get to the root of the problem. When people are struggling with compulsions, it is very easy to get caught up on the consequences of the compulsion rather than seeing the compulsions as the problem. Think about this from the perspective of a bunch of people hitting themselves in the face with hammers. So one person, you know, maybe they're gonna hit themselves in the face with a hammer, but because they, you know, they eat really healthy, drink lots of milk, uh, they don't break their jaw, but uh, maybe they, they end up with lots of cuts and bruises and there's blood streaming into their eyes. Uh, and so they might go online like, searching for issues with like excessive face bleeding and, and blurry vision because they can't see through all of the blood. But then somebody else, uh, you know, maybe they hit themselves in the jaw, like maybe they're a Tyrannosaurus Rex, so they have really small arms. And so they hit themselves in the jaw because that's as high as they can reach and their, their jaw breaks. They're going online looking for help with a broken jaw. Now for both of those people, although like, one was a dinosaur, so those for that person and that dinosaur, they're going to find it useful to deal with those superficial consequences of hitting themselves in the face with a hammer. So yeah, they you know probably wanna get help with getting the blood out of their eyes, get that jaw fixed. But for both of them, for long-term recovery, they both need to understand why they experienced those problems. So try to look past the superficial characteristics of what you're dealing with. Those might be the things that are catching your attention and the things that you want to change. But those can become challenges if you start to see yourself as different from other people because of those superficial characteristics. If you're going online and saying, oh, does anybody ever have uh, blurry vision? And then you decide, oh, okay, well you, Mr. Tyrannosaurus Rex, you have a broken jawbone, so you're different from me. We're not struggling with the same things. The reality is that both that T-Rex and that person are dealing with the same compulsions. Those are the three reasons why I think it's useful to see all compulsions as hitting yourself in the face with a hammer. So those three reasons were, number one, it helps to connect the compulsions with the consequences. Don't like swinging the hammer if you don't like the pain that comes from that. Number two, it helps you see what's valuable and that's supporting your long-term health and happiness rather than hitting yourself in the face with a hammer for short-term relief. And number three, it helps us not get caught up in the superficial consequences of engaging in compulsions because of the different contextual factors in our lives, we all experience compulsions slightly differently. But that doesn't change the fact that the compulsions are all similar and we can all support each other in learning not to hit ourselves in the face with a hammer. It really helped me to recognize that no matter how many rational, totally reasonable reasons I can think of to swing a hammer at my face, no matter how much I like swinging that hammer, no matter how much other people cheer me on when I'm swinging that hammer, that it will always cause more pain. Compulsions always cause more pain and suffering. And if I wanted to stop that suffering, 
I had to learn how to put the hammer down. 